So, Crisis in the Thirds has been over for about three-ish months now, um, and it's been over long enough that we can kind of look at the crossover now and we can look back on it. Uh, I've seen Crisis probably about in full, I've probably seen it about nine or ten times by this point. Um, when the first three parts, I've seen a lot more than the second two parts. But I did have time to think about it more and kind of let it settle in my mind and let it settle where I would put it on a ranking of the crossovers. Now, I did a ranking of all the crossovers a while ago. I think it was last summer. Um, so this is before Infinite Earths came out. And in that one, I didn't just do the yearly big crossovers. I also included a lot of the smaller ones like Duet, World's Finest, Rogue Air... Uh, and the things like the the Arrow uh, season three premiere and the Flash pilot, but for this one, I'm only going to be doing the the full on proper big yearly crossovers. Ready, So in 6th place, I have the very first crossover, which is The Flash Season 1 Episode 8 and Arrow Season 3 Episode 8, and it goes by Flash vs. Arrow or The Brave and the Bold, um, whichever you want to call it. But this is the very first uh, yearly crossover, it was the one that brought together both Arrow and Flash to fight Rainbow Rider on The Flash's episode, and then Captain Boomerang on Arrow's episode. And this is actually still a very, very, very fun, good crossover, even rewatching it now. There's still a lot of enjoyment to be had. It's so 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 basic compared to like Crisis and the Earths, but it's it's fun. Um, and you even even the Arrow part of the crossover, it doesn't feel like a like it's a crossover in sense. Like they even have the Arrow flashbacks still in the Arrow episode. Like later on, they started to make these crossovers feel like when it would be an an Arrow episode of the crossover, it would still feel like part of a larger crossover, it'd probably have more Arrow characters than usual, or mainly use Arrow sets, but it wouldn't go as far as to include big, huge Arrow plot points like the flashbacks, but this one did, and that kind of adds to the very basicness of it, but of course, when it first came out, it was the best thing ever. Um, plus, seeing Flash and Arrow fight was really cool, um, the fact that no one really won the fight. I know you can kind of make arguments for either way, but when you really look at it, you kind of think that neither of them really won. Um, they were both very good at fighting. They both held their own. Captain Boomerang was a great villain. Rainbow Rider, um, he wasn't a great villain in a sense. I kind of see the Flash Pride of the Crossover more so being Oliver versus Barry than Oliver and Barry versus Rainbow Rider or any of that sort of stuff. Um, there's also that cool thing about... Uh, Joe, how he doesn't trust the Arrow, and then how Oliver is one of the first people to kind of say there's something up about Harrison Wells. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff like that. It also ties into Sarah's death with the, the reason them coming over to Central City is partly because they need help tracking down the Canary's killer, and they also need help tracking down uh, a boomerang. And so that's it. It's still a very fun crossover. Protect us. It's what makes them all heroes. My hate will follow you. In fifth place, I have the second crossover, and that's Heroes Join Forces, which was The Flash Season 2 Episode 8 and Arrow Season 4 Episode 8. And this is essentially the crossover that set up Legends of Tomorrow, since it introduced Vandal Savage, it introduced Hawkman and Hawkgirl. And I think that this is a lot of people's least favourite of the big crossovers, mainly because um, there's a lot of drama, unnecessary drama in the Arrow part of the crossover, that definitely does bring the whole thing down. And that's when Oliver goes looking into William, looking into his son for the first time, and um, that Felicity kind of comes out of nowhere and is very unnecessarily angry and aggressive towards Oliver, and that means Oliver's head's not in the game, and that means that basically all of Central City gets destroyed in a different timeline, um, and it's completely understandable that that annoys a lot of people. It annoys me too, the fact that they needed to put a piece of drama into the crossover like that didn't really help and it kind of stands from the fact that Arrow Season 4 is very drama filled. But um, even despite all that, I still find a lot to love in this crossover. This is the first real big hero team up, kind of in a sense, in that there's a whole team of heroes. Like, the end battle includes the Green Arrow, the Flash, Hawkman, Hawkgirl, um, Diggle, Black Canary and Thea. I, Diggle was Spartan by this point, I'm sure. But um, yeah, it, it includes a bunch of heroes rather than just Oliver and Barry. 
which, like, I think the most up to this point had been Oliver, Barry, and uh, Ronnie. That was kind of the biggest team up we'd have, or an hour would it be Oliver, Roy, and Black Canary. Um, so it's kind of cool that this is the first real kind of team up, which kind of gave us a little bit of hope for Legends tomorrow, because uh, I feel like the way this crossover ended, they were kind of be like, oh, you like that? Well, this is what Legends of Tomorrow is going to be all the time. And Season 1 Legends of Tomorrow definitely wasn't that. Um, but it was still very good. I, I feel like the Hawks were also better in this crossover than they were in Legends of Tomorrow. And Vandal Savage was a pretty cool villain. I just... I would have preferred if he'd stayed as a crossover villain and they used something else as the villain for Legends of Tomorrow Season 1, probably. Um, still very good. We see Malcolm Merlin. We see that uh, this is their first kind of step to make each episode feel more like an episode of a of an overall crossover rather than an episode of the show. Like in the Flash episode, we have Barry save Team Arrow from Damien Dark, and we have actually most of the Flash episode be set in Starling City, whereas most of the Arrow episode is actually set in Central City, which was kind of a cool spin on how the whole thing was. But it's still a very fun crossover that just gets kind of bogged down by drama. Um, I still think it is superior to the first crossover, though, in quite a few ways. Barry, I'm not letting you leave. No offense, Oliver, but you and what army? This one. Listen, Red, I don't like you, but when you got a crew, you don't take a hit for the rest. And in fourth place, I have Invasion, which is the third crossover. So basically, every year up until Invasion, I thought the crossovers were getting just better and better and better. I, honestly, every year up until Crisis Nerd X, I thought the crossovers were getting better and better and better every year. But um, Invasion was obviously the Dominators come in. It's also the introduction of Supergirl into the crossover, the big crossovers. Um, now, this one is kind of interesting because I know a lot of people also don't really feel that warm about this crossover, which it's probably due to the fact that Supergirl's episode ended up being a Supergirl episode with a little bit of a tie-in at the very end, and that's understandable. They they kind of tease this as a four-episode crossover, but it's definitely only a three-episode crossover, but I still think there was so much to love about this. It does feel a little bit disjointed with Arrow's 100th being the middle episode. Um, I have personally... I'm fine with it because it gave Arrow the chance to do a lot of cool things for their 100th that they probably wouldn't have gotten the chance to do if they'd just stuck as a normal Arrow episode. Um, but it does feel a little disjointed in the fact that we go from a very crossover heavy episode to an episode that is very, very, very obviously all about Arrow and Arrow's cast to an episode that is, again, crossover focused. If you're not a huge Arrow fan going into this crossover, you're not gonna kinda like that middle episode, you're going to find it to be a step down and to kind of unnecessarily slow the plot down. Um, so I completely understand where people are coming from on that point. Uh, like if I was a huge Flash fan and I just kind of watched Arrow and I didn't love Arrow, I would have been kind of annoyed that all of a sudden this whole crossover is slowed down because a show I don't really care about much has to have its hundredth in the middle of it. Um, plus, it's kind of unfair that for Arrow, they just they threw the 100th in as an episode of the crossover, but when it came to Flash's 100th, they moved the crossover to a later episode so that the Flash could have its 100th uninterrupted. Um, so it's a little bit annoying that they didn't do that for Arrow. But I still find lots of love about this crossover. The final fight was the biggest thing we'd gotten up to this point, um, and it's still fantastic. I love that team-up shot of everyone standing there and then they run at the Dominators. Um, there's a bunch of heroes in this that this is kind of their only time in the Arrowverse to get the shine. Like, uh, Firestorm and um, Steel, they get a lot to do in these crossovers, or in this crossover, they don't get a lot to do in the later ones. Like, Crisis and Earth X is pretty much the last crossover for both Nate and uh, Jax and Martin. But um, they get a lot more to do in this crossover than they do in Earth X. So this is kind of a lot of time where a lot of Legends characters get a lot to do, which I really liked as well. Plus, the Wave Rider was used very well in this crossover. I felt like most of the characters were used very well. 
the first episode has a decent bit of unnecessary drama with kind of the whole Cisco thing and the whole being annoyed by Flashpoint and all that sort of stuff. Like, yes, it was a topic that had to be brought up due to the fact that Flashpoint changed characters in our Like, Diggle, who basically lost the child, like, he gained another child, but he still had lost the child due to Flashpoint. Um, and while that did need to be brought up, I did feel Flashpoint took up a little bit too much of the episode in terms of talking, so part one does have a little bit of that sort of stuff in there. Um, but other than that, I can't really think of a lot of things that I don't like about this crossover. In third place is the most recent one, and that is Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, I have a lot of gripes with Infinite Earths. A, a lot of gripes with it. Um, and to be honest, I was quite disappointed with this crossover. It, it, There was a lot of things that either could have been done better, or I think that they should have done or shouldn't have done. Like, um, I'm very, very, very kind of annoyed with how they handled Oliver in this crossover. Him becoming Spectre is cool in theory, but... I don't think that's the way they should have went with his character in this. I don't think they should have killed off Oliver's human form in the first episode. Um, on top of that, the scale didn't feel near as big as it should have. Like, seeing all of those cameos was cool, but getting a lot of those cameos meant that we either didn't get the big, big, big fights we should have been getting, we didn't get the bigger scenes we should have been getting, and it also meant that there wasn't a, there wasn't room for a lot of our reverse characters to show. Think people like Reverse Flash or Psycho Pirate, stuff like that. They should have been in this crossover, and they were nowhere to be found because their scream time was given to characters from different shows or movies um, that had never been involved with the Arabs. Like, I love seeing all that, but I think that Maybe if Crisis had been longer, like maybe if Crisis had been basically a mini series with like eight episodes, then definitely do the, the cameos. But since this was a tight five episode plot going through at five hour shows, they probably should have just stuck to keeping this as a strictly hour sort of thing. And um, that's just my opinion on it. I I think that a lot of people probably will disagree on that because of how cool it was seeing some of those characters come back. But um, also the Smallville, I loved the Smallville cameo when I first saw it, but after thinking about it more and more, I'm not too happy with how they handled Clark in that, um, mainly because it doesn't line up with Smallville Clark that he'd give up his powers like that, especially since this could only have been about 10 years after Smallville ended, which meant that Clark and Smallville's timeline would only have been Superman for about 10 years by the time he decided to give up his powers. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, um, but that said, this crossover is still vastly superior to all the other ones, just in terms of scale, in terms of cool moments, in terms of feeling like a crossover. Um, like, Black Lightning gets introduced in this. We get to reveal that Black Lightning is now in the Arrowverse. That is so great. Um, we get the destruction of Supergirl's Earth. We get Superman in this, and not just kind of in a smallish way. Superman is a pretty big deal in this, to the point where we have Brandon Rice playing a version of Superman. There's things like this that... Um, I definitely make this crossover superior to the pro to most of the prior ones, but I still just felt that they could have handled this a lot better. Uh, I know a lot of this comes out to the fact that the CW just on the CW and WB and all of them just wouldn't give them the money they needed to make a proper 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 crossover. But I still thought that they did a pretty good job for what they had. Um, I just there's there's some parts I just wish could have been more. Nazis alone. Who needs an army when you got legends? All right, we're on the move. Kill them all! She's fast. I'm faster. This isn't your Earth. Go home! In second place, I have Crisis on Earth X, and this was... Uh, the crossover from three years ago. Uh, this is one with the Nazis, Earth X, all that sort of stuff. And this was a fantastic crossover. Like, I was so surprised at how good this was. And this is, in my opinion, the peak of crossoverness in terms of how everything feels so interwoven, everything feels so interconnected. There's no down moments, there's no unnecessary drama. Everything works so well and everything flows so well from one piece to another. The action set pieces, um, the fight scenes, the team-ups, they all never feel as big and as 
rewarding as they do in this crossover. Um, like the the choice to have an evil Oliver Queen, an evil Kara, and then Eobard Thawne be the three villains basically of the of the crossover was fantastic decision, and that's why I feel like this crossover is always going to be remembered much higher than the other ones is because this crossover feels very personal, the most personal out of all of them. Um, you know, you already have some kind of attachment to the villains because they look like the heroes. We also got a pretty huge death in this crossover uh, in terms of Martin Stein, and um, it it brought a lot of emotion that the other crossovers haven't really managed to bring. Um, but I I loved this crossover. It's it's infinitely rewatchable in my opinion as well, and it's still so fantastic. You said I'd pass the test if I knew my true self. My true self is filled with darkness. Barry and Kara are different. They inspire hope. They inspire people because they are the best of us. And if this test of yours is going to kill our best chance at stopping this crisis, well, as gods go, you're not a very smart one. And in first place, I have Elseworlds. I love Elseworlds, mainly because of how much it hypes up Crisis, I guess, is that it makes things feel scary. It makes it feel like things are going to be dark in the future. Um, also, the, the switching between Oliver and Barry in terms of Flash and Green Arrow was great. There's, um, we get the Smallville Kent Farm. This is the first crossover that Superman is in, and that, um... The, the team up at the end of the first episode feels like feels like something that you'd see in the Justice League animated series, which was so fun. Uh, the monitor is great. The the scene with Oliver talking to the monitor about saving Barry and Kara towards the end of part three is still one of the best moments in the entire hour. Deegan is a is a surprisingly good villain. And um, we get the introduction of Batwoman, we get uh John Wesley's ship back as his 1990s version of The Flash. There's so much cool stuff like that in here. And um, the soundtrack is also in my opinion, probably the best the soundtrack has been in the entire Arverse. There's there's a lot of bits of music in this that um I think are unparalleled in all of, in all of these shows. But overall, I felt that Elseworlds was the best written crossover. Like it might not be the biggest stakes, the highest stakes, all that sort of stuff. But this felt very character centric. This felt like we got we really got time with Oliver and Barry and Kara together one last time before Oliver will go out in crisis. Um, this is also the most Oliver and Barry get to do in the entire universe, I feel like, with maybe just the early seasons of Flash kind of rivaling it. But um, th just because of that, I felt like seeing these three characters interact for most of this crossover without the, the wide range of other characters around them really, really, really benefited the crossover, the characters, the writing. It, it gave them a chance to do a lot of things that they haven't gotten to do in a while. But yeah, I just love Elseworlds. <laughs> There's not really much more I can say about it, but I think it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, that is how I'd rank all six of the big crossovers. But why don't you tell me your ranking, and if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and all of that. And I hope you're staying safe with um, with COVID out there. It, it's not an ideal time, but we're going to get through it. So thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you all soon.